Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Pauline Baird, a Buxtonian, Buxtonian Guyanese. I was born in the village of Buxton, Guyana, and I was raised there. I'm a proud Buxtonian. I tell the story of our village. I tell our family traditions, our whispered stories, our long forgotten and practiced histories. Lao Tak story. You see, a Buxton, people just work hard. And this emancipation time, books and people just celebrate with our kind of food and they just dress up. You see me dress up tonight? Because I'm wearing this headdress in honor of my mother. My mother used to make this headdress and I do it just like how she used to do it. Me can't show her, you know, but not today. I do it just so. And me mother dead since me was 10 years old. And me learn from me mother how to do me here. Me old now. So anyway, back to the story. A Buxton emancipation mean big thing i know what emancipation from church the buxton seven day adventist church every first of august we used to celebrate first of august with the people and we used to get culture night we just get we cook up rice which and shine rice and swank and we just tell stories sister mavis morrison used to come and tell me story she tell me about how um she grandmother she knows she grandmother and she grandmother never used to talk english she used to talk another language and she say she feels she grandmother uncle and she grandmother had one uncle like wrong she wrong she, she, she uncle and things like that you know maybe I wish we could have asked sister morrison more thing that but then i was little i didn't understand the importance of it so I want to tell a story about Buxton. Hey, now, a Guyana and Buxton, I get one phrase that I use. This phrase means fight up. Fight up. You just use it like this. When you see your child kind of lazy or not putting in enough effort in things, you say, but you got to fight up. Girl, you got to fight up. You got to put effort. You got to represent yourself. They call it self-efficacy. Well, books and people had plenty self-efficacy. That's why they go stop train. When me been little me used to hear books and people stop train, books and women stop train. You know, when me interview books and people, for example, Chevron Ford, Mr. Chevron, I won't make them say books and people stop train. What I mean? She said, listen to me. Many people think that they're just ignorant, they're ignorant and going to just stop train. So, them wasn't ignorant and going to just stop train. Books and people are a patriotic nation. She used the word nation. Books and people, let me tell you something. We believe you are a nation in another nation. That's how we are. And when books and people fight, they just fight a certain way. I thought they used to fight with fists and so, and weapon. Maybe some of them get them kind of elements there, but let me tell you. The kind of fight I know, I learn it. And guess where I learn it? I learn it from the archives. I tell y'all, I just talk to dead people. So when I go back to the village, I just go straight to the archives. Many days. You see, before I was a researcher, when I, go, when I was home and I go back, I just talk to old people. But when I go back to do research, I discover that is not just old people that are talking to me, but the talk to the archivist. When me left being an old people, me come back, me hear about archivist. So me go to the archivist, like a sister Yvette and them. And then I go to the archives. Walter Rodney archives in Georgetown. When I go to the archives, I well prepared to talk to the dead. And does the dead talk back to me? Of course, the dead talk back to me. I just talked to the dead by opening the books in the archives and the newspapers. That's where I just find them. And when I go to talk to the dead, I just carry somebody else with me. The first time I went, I carry my cousin, daughter. Um, one of them little Harris girl. I mean, I don't know Kendra or the other one. Chiron. Then she went with me to look in the archives. I got to carry she for teach she how to talk to dead people. The last time I went, I carry Shona Laundry for teach she how to talk for the dead people because we got to pass the story on. Because what you got to understand, each person, each body, each body, human body is the archives. And I got to ensure that the archives go on. So, we just go to the archives and we just look at a document called the Court of Policy. This court of policy was a system or a, a governing body of starting with the Dutch people. 
You see, back then, they used to get these landed people who had all the power. And back then, it was 40 acres and a mule or a black person. That was what you had to have to become the landed to make policy. Anyway, that's a long story. So I go into the archives to talk to the dead people. And then I realized three things about Buxtonians, how they just fight up. First of all, I learned the first weapon of fighting by Buxtonian is this thing. You see this thing here? This is a pen. I saw Buxtonians fight with pen. Them Buxton people this. In 1856, that's a couple years after they bought the plantation and made it a village, they had to go to court because the colonials in this court of policy thing made policy to tax them for their own land. Yes, they had small money and yet they're going to tax them. So they taxed, they taxed them in 1856. And then they taxed them again in 1862. And as if done enough, they taxed them again in 1863. And that is the one that really get them riled up. And so they said, mm -mm, enough of this, damn it, then I'll take this. In the meantime, they're using the pen. And that's when I realized, number one, books and people are some of the most litigious people of Guyana. They're proper like court. And they take them to court up and down and say they write in. Take it from me. I see it with my own eye. I see my own box and people handwriting. They write it down. What they said to the governor. They said a petition. And guess what? When the petition, it just get three words in the book. Petition was read. They not even honor them words. They might even have an audience with them. You see, I pass. Proper I pass. When I see that in the book, I say, eh. How oh, they ma treat up with people so? The archive people then run out and say, what go on, what go on? Me say, box some people petition. They say, I box some people bad. So when I hear box some people bad, not bad, them bad as in terrible. They're bad because I'm a fight up. This emancipation time, it good for remember that. Box some people, such as Chance Backers, our man named Ogle and Webster, decided that they want to carry the petition further. They decide I'm going to take schooner and go Barbados. Yeah, all know what is a schooner? A schooner is a ship or a kind of vessel to go on the ocean and carry you somewhere else. When Buxton was purchased, Buxton had some assets that come with it. It come with a schooner, it come with schools, it come with church, and it come with a hospital. Buxton had plenty of assets. I'm going to tell you all another day about the Buxton assets. So they take the schooner. I don't know if it's the schooner that they, in, that they that got as an asset, but they take a schooner and go to Barbados and petition there in order to get redress. But the people them fooled them. And when they came back, they found that even though they petitioned there, they worked against them and their properties were in jeopardy. But some people decide that they would still petition. So they went back to the court and they filed more petitions. This time, they smart them and go alone. They go with BV people. Uh -huh. They say boxing people stop training. They say BV people live a court. Yes. And BV people petition with Buxton to get this story fixed with this 1863 taxes. They wanted to go back to the 1856 taxes. They fought for that. The third thing that Buxton people did, they had signatories. They were the people of the pen. 166 signatories from Buxton and Friendship write and sign that they want to do away with these taxes to get the boot off their necks. Well, the people signed. I sit with my own eye. I thought to myself, well said. And I was so happy. I jumped up in this archive. I said, they live, they live, they signed. Some of them had writing scrawly, scrawly. Some of them had writing well penned, good calligraphy. Very legible. And then I saw a note after the petition. And that is where the emissary for the British wrote a note to his people. I don't know if books and people ever saw it. But I know I seen it, and it tells me two tales. It tells me, you see, this pen is a powerful thing. 
they used to always write, but books and people wrote too. And even the mad people them write. One of the women them on the list, the white man turned around and said, she notoriously insane. Well, me not care if she insane. She signed that she don't want no taxes. And that means even in she insanity, she still fight up. So what I got to say to Buxtonians and young Buxtonians, I get the legacy of Buxtonians and how we fight. We fight with the pen. I choose to fight with the pen. And with the pen, I write these books. What the story say? I write it for the children of our village, the children all over the world. What the story say? Won the African Authors Award last night in South Africa. It also won the Guyana Cultural Association Award second prize, the pen, the book. I grew up in a village where these were revered. This is how we fight. This is how I fight. This is how I fight up. This is a legacy I would love to leave with the children of our village. Pride, legacy, and responsibility. If you like what you hear, please like and subscribe. I intend to build an army of people who are going to fight. In this emancipation time, how do we emancipate ourselves? It's an ongoing process. And coming soon, I'm going to invite you to join me to talk about how we go write them. I'm going to have a section called We Go Write Them Too. Join me so I will write them too. If you want to do that, like and subscribe and pass the word along and walk good.